Your business is struggling with interruptions from crappy internet. <laughs> Big Leaf Networks claims they can fix that, that your business will run smoother, you'll fix drop VoIP calls and remote sessions. Let's see if it actually works. Here's our full review of Big Leaf Networks coming up next. <laughs> Hi, it's Dean. <laughs> All right. So why this review? Why now and why should you trust it at all? First of all, I'm not an engineer, but I have worked with over 75 Big Leaf Networks deployments. Here's how. This has been about six years in the making. I am a telecom agent and advocate. In full disclosure, um, even though Big Leaf uses telecom professionals and IT professionals to exclusively uh, write their new orders, um, I wanted to make this as objective as possible, uh, candid and informative. It'll help me, and I hope it helps you. So um, let's dive right in. How does it work? <laughs> let's recap the problem first. Poor internet in general especially when you're dependent on cloud-based applications, whether it's like we all are, VoIP calling or CRM in the cloud or Teams or Zoom, uh, remote desktop and VPNs, let's say. Um, when a provider glitches, that's it. If it goes out for just a fraction of a second, you're, um, you lose everything. Everything's dropped and you have to reset. You might have a backup, but by the time that backup kicks in, all hell is broken loose. Um, and it, it, there's nothing really seamless about it. Big Leaf's answer is to send you right to your location a handy dandy Big Leaf router like this one. Big Leaf, and this is where your brain might start to hurt, but here it is. Big Leaf replaces your poorly performing internet by connecting it, the bad internet, to this. You then plug into it and you get good internet. Bad goes in, good comes out. Say what? How exactly is this box going to fix my lousy internet? Here's what's going on. And let me go off script for a minute and just talk to you IT professionals that already understand SD-WAN technology. Thank you for your patience. We're gonna to get to some meat and potatoes in just a little bit but I'm trying to make this accessible to everybody because one of the things I like about Big Leaf Networks is anybody can use it and order it and plug it in and it works. So back on script, Big Leaf, by connecting to your existing internet, it creates an IPsec tunnel that connects to their gateway cloud cluster. And basically it's a bunch of servers in a data center and there are multiple data centers. So they're geographically redundant in some of the largest cities in the US. And these clusters do a couple of really cool things. They, first of all, are already much closer through certain peering arrangements to all these cloud providers. They're not having to travel as far. So they're much closer to begin with and it's much more uh, elegant, I, I'd like to say. Then you've got uh, the fact that they can, along with the router that's at your location, they control quality of service with certain packets that are moving both back and forth for things like voice calls and video calls and real-time communications. This is uh, really cool because it's something that no matter what kind of router you have and you have quality of service, you can't control the other side or at least most of the other side. Now, that's all fine and good. Big Leaf brings me better internet over my bad internet. All right, I'll buy that. But what happens when my circuit goes down. You can't bring, it's gone. Do you really need a second circuit? Dean's answer is yes, you do. <laughs> um, Big Leaf does say, and they are correct, that uh, they can do a great job uh, fixing internet with just one circuit because they automatically prioritize and they keep uh, they keep safe your voice and video calls. When you do have a single circuit and it's being saturated or it's being it's having some issues where certain things aren't going well, it can help a great deal. It'll keep things like VoIP and video calls uh, pristine if at all possible. It does help. 
But if you truly want to sleep at night and you truly want to have seamless, worry-free connectivity, you're missing all the magic if you don't have a second circuit. Now, you don't have to spend a lot of money on it, okay? Um, it, you don't need anything huge or big or inordinately uh, uh, high quality because the way Big Leaf works is it's looking, it's analyzing the way your circuit or circuits are working. It checks, it's 10 times a second. It checks for latency, uh, uh, packet loss, and um, jitter. And when it does this, it knows which circuit's good for what. It can tell. So if you have uh, a, a couple of crummy circuits that fortunately typically are not both crummy at the same time. <laughs> so what happens is, or if they're crummy in different ways, <laughs> it will it will send one one out one route and one packet of another route. Very common to see this. You'll see sometimes on video calls or VoIP calls, it'll use one circuit out and another circuit in. Um, very cool. Um, but that's the magic. You're using everything you're paying for. Heck, if you've got a backup circuit already, this is a no-brainer. You try Big Leaf. I mean, seriously. Uh, you know, it's just a spare tire sitting there doing nothing for you. Now you get all you're paying for. I love that. Um, the uh, when I started deploying Big Leaf, there wasn't 5G that you could get wire, uh, you know, for your house or for an office where you could plug it in and get decent connectivity. And heck, you know, if you can't get anything else, then call Elon and get some Starlink because you need a second circuit. Before we take a closer look at the Big Leaf Edge routers that work with the optimized network, I want to take a moment and make clear what Big Leaf is not. It is not a firewall. Big Leaf service, the internet service that Big Leaf hands you, sits outside of it. It's like any other carrier product. It's not a dual WAN gateway. In fact, once you've connected your regular old circuits to Big Leaf, that's all they're going to do. You're not going to use those for anything. It's not recommended you connect anything else to them except for Big Leaf, so Big Leaf can do its magic. The um, when we look at Big Leaf as a product, you really just for you know from an IT perspective, it's just an internet provider. Um, it does come with static IP. You will get a um, an IP block for most packages. So when one of those underlying circuits drops. No big deal. The IP stays the same. If you're connecting back to a static IP at one of your locations, it's it really helps. Anybody who's had to you know re-log in on or under a secondary IP when they've lost a VPN connection knows what I'm talking about. Um, uh, let's see here. Oh, the routers. Okay, so we have a 108 <laughs> and we have a, a 112. The smaller 108 is good for 500 megabits by 500 megabits. And the 112 is uh, up to 3 gig by 3 gig. A closer look at the 108. This is a 500 megabit device, but if it's set up in the home office configuration, you can push uh, a gigabit. Uh, of course, it won't be symmetrical. WAN 1 and WAN 2 are the only two inputs that allow you to use either fiber optic or RJ45 copper, while 3 and 4, your inputs, are only RJ45 copper. The LAN output to your firewall and your uh, local area network is uh, RJ45. And the auxiliary port, which can be enabled, uh, just gives you a second output that can go wherever you want. The other really big difference from the smaller unit to the larger big brother is that it's fanless, it uses less power, it's very quiet. The larger 112, besides being wider, it's still only one unit tall, uh, it has a fan. So it might have some fan noise and uh, uses a little more power at 150 watt maximum. The inputs are all preset as RJ45 copper straight through one, two, three, and four. And then if you need fiber optic input or a fiber optic LAN output, you have Big Leaf installer. We have them put in a uh, expansion card. It's not hot swappable, so we just need to know if it's fiber ahead of time. Then you have your LAN out, your standard LAN RJ45 and your auxiliary port secondary output, just like the smaller unit. 
Both routers do a very good job with same IP failover. So if you are, uh, you're connected to a static IP uh, and any of your underlying circuits goes out, you just don't simply know it. Um, in every case where I've checked, their monitoring of the quality of the underlying circuits is right on. It's on the, it's on the dashboard, which we're gonna look at next, and, it's, uh, and they do a good job of that. Um, talking about the dynamic QoS, now they state that it is an effective and automatic prioritization of traffic. And they class your traffic with six classes. <laughs> VoIP, real-time, urgent, interactive, bulk data, and other. <laughs> so, and this works well enough. But the coolest thing about it is that, and everything's cool with me, the best part of it, I think, is that it works right out of the box. That's really nice. It, um, you plug it in and it simply works. I'm not sure if I know how they pull this trick off. Um, I pressed them on it a little bit. I think they've got a very robust, and I guess it's not a big deal to have a really good catalog of uh, what providers use what IPs and, uh, and some other algorithms and information that they have that's working. The fact that it's connected with the, cl the cloud clusters and that I've only seen it get better and better over the years. Um, you know, and now with AI, who knows where it's going to go. But the, um, the graphs that I see are, are, are pretty accurate. I don't, I honestly don't think it's 100% accurate. I think there are some traffic they don't know what it is or they, it's not, you know, I've, we've had to go in and adjust probably maybe three or two out of the, you know, the 75 where we've gone in and we've had to actually say, hey, this IP address is actually a server that we need to get to. Um, it's pretty easy to figure out. And that's the coolest part about the diagnostics on this is that you can see how everything's performing and it's actually can help when there's a real problem. So, um, but it's plug and play and, uh, and that's, that's the real story. A real world deployment. So we're going to take a look at my own home office setup. So, um, and I'm very lucky. I have, um, three circuits connected to my Big Leaf, uh, AT&T, uh, which is a shared fiber residential. Uh, it's Comcast, which is coax cable. And I have a T-Mobile uh, 5G device as my third WAN interface to the Big Leaf. Um, and now I take you to my beautiful laundry room. Yep, and here we are live from my laundry room. And I have Big Leaf installed up with the rest of my household gear up on a shelf. We're gonna start this tour of the top shelf with the three providers that I have. And rest assured, you do not need to have three providers like I do. Um, you can have three really crummy ones. I'm lucky I have uh, uh, you know, fiber and I have coax from Comcast and I have 5G. But Big Leaf really uh, does amazing with uh, lesser circuits, whether it's DSL, it's cable co and cellular. So uh, I'm just very fortunate. But I've got the modem on the left for Comcast, the AT&T uh, gateway in the middle, and the T-Mobile 5G, which is typically upstairs uh, where I keep it to get a better signal. But I have it down here for you guys. Why have all three at a house? Well, why not? Doesn't cost a whole lot. And in my case, I work from home all the time. And my wife is a doctor and she does telehealth. So this has made things uh, really nice for us here. The 108 Big Leaf is the smaller of the two devices they currently ship out. They do come with rack mounts. I don't have the need for a rack mount here, of course. Um, the only quirk on this I found uh, for me, and this is probably user error, you don't have to reset these routers ever. But one time I decided to turn it off and I tried to um, use this button right here and it wouldn't turn off for me. I had to unscrew this cable, which took a minute to get it off um, and it uh, reset just fine. They apparently do a very good job at Big Leaf mo managing and monitoring these things remotely. So uh, uh, my clients tell me, my customers say they it's the most stable thing in their in their server rack, which is wonderful. Um, that's pretty much it. There's not much to it. Uh, this is the live install. It took uh, me all of two minutes to put it in. And that's it from the laundry room. 
Of course, I have done some hardcore testing and disconnected circuits deliberately and made sure it works as it's supposed to. Um, it has saved the day from time to time. Ah, the web dashboard is easy and it is simple. Um, you don't have to be an engineer. There's nothing to set up. And most of my clients do not bother. A lot of them don't even look at it till well after the uh, installation. Uh, and it's really about setting up the alerts so that if you have a circuit go down, you're aware of it because that's the issue is that you don't know <laughs> when one of those circuits is going down because you're just rolling along. So um, uh, the uh, let's take a look at the dashboard. This is gonna be a very, very quick, brief review of a handful of what I think are some of the most important features and functions of the Big Leaf web portal and dashboard. Um, highly recommend you set up your own 30 minute demonstration with the Big Leaf engineering team and myself and um, to take a look at your specific uh, questions and, and get some answers for whatever's relevant to you. But here's the, here are the things that I think you might wanna see now. We're gonna look at my personal. From the main page on the left side, you can see your location. If you have multiple sites or multiple locations, you'll see them all there and can toggle between them. This view is really meant to give you an idea of instantaneously how am I doing. In my case, I'm doing great. There are no risks as they call it. The bandwidth utilization is 1%. My latency is low at 19%. And then the green bars show me green across the board. They would be yellow and or red if they were down. ATT Fiber, Comcast, and the T-Mobile are all doing great right now. Then as we go down below, these statistics show up and they give you an idea of what Big Leaf has been adjusting on your behalf between the various circuits. Um, I did have an outage yesterday with Comcast and it did help out a bit. I was down for about 15 minutes on that circuit. Um, from the performance tab, here you see, this is general, what Big Leaf is doing as a whole. It gives you the uh, throughput of everything. And then this is the latency of everything. Uh, I had mentioned that I was over 20, but I've been averaging less than 19. This is the AT&T fiber circuit that I'm on and not a whole lot going on with it, but you can see from the throughput, the capacity shows that they're testing it and it looks like it's good. And the throughput's been fine. Comcast cable, uh, they adjust these graphs slightly based on how much is coming through. There you can see on the Comcast where the out, it was out actually yesterday for a little bit. Um, and then this is the T-Mobile 5G, which as always is choppy and cellular, but it does work with the Big Leaf service. From the configurations tab, you can see how Big Leaf has set up your circuits to work together. Each circuit has the information entered by Big Leaf before your router is uh, shipped to you. Uh, the speed, the type of service, and how Big Leaf is going to have them work together, which is pretty straightforward. Uh, there'll be a little site ID information there, and then the tunnel endpoint info as well. Now I'm gonna sneak in a view of a customer location on a single circuit. They actually have multiple circuits, but this particular spectrum circuit is a great way for us to look at how Big Leaf classifies internet traffic types. So I'm gonna deselect all of these traffic types and we'll start from the beginning here. Let's click VoIP and see how much VoIP went over this circuit in the last 24 hours. At night they were closed and then we've got their calls. Then we'll just add to that real-time communications or links to real-time. And then you've got uh, what they call interactive which I think is like CRM or stuff like that. And then you have other, interestingly, I believe this down here is actually backups. Uh, on, these, on these graphs, what's below is upload and what's on top is download. It's kind of reversed from what you'd think. And then of course they're overhead. So that's how they classify the traffic and it's really cool to see that in real time. Oh, there is bulk data. That is uh, all of the uh, uh, generalized traffic that they're bringing in on the spectrum circuit. Then we have their capacity, uh, the limits. You'll see that it's not quite perfect on a, on a cable connection, which is typical. And here you have uh, the fact that the, it's not been behaving very well. And a little latency up, that's not gonna hurt much, but you can also, to see how bad a circuit's been, you can look at it by the month. There's a monthly view. You can also look at it down to three hours. This is great when something is 
going wrong, especially when you want to prove to the cable company that, listen, the circuit's not working. This gives you some ammunition for that. Awesome. Uh, the nitty gritty, latency and overhead. First, let's talk about overhead. Overhead is the amount of bandwidth that Big Leaf keeps to itself to do its magic. Uh, it's, it's just whatever is used up in the process. So they say it's, it's up to 10%. I think from what I've seen, it's less than that. Um, well worth it. You get 90%. So if you have 100 megabits coming to you from, say, your cable company, um, you're going to get at least 90, 93 megabits of usable. Um, it's kind of hard to tell with some of these circuits. So the overhead works. It's not a huge, huge impact. Latency is a different story. You can have, depending on your location and your proximity to their gateway cluster, um, you can actually lower your latency compared to what the underlying circuit is. So it all depends um, on, on that part of the network. But the latency in general, the average, I happen to be the average here. I'm in Florida. My closest gateway cluster is Atlanta. Um, and uh, it runs about 20 to 23 milliseconds here. I think of that, I think maybe five of that, five to six milliseconds is big leaf, if that. Uh, everyone's different. But I have them in the single digits, and the highest ones I've seen are 40 or 50. But on average, they are between 18 and I'd say 27, right in there. So I'm right in the center of that, too. How much does it cost? Here it comes. Big Leaf offers three plans or three tiers. An essential plan, which provides a single router, and then you pick your choice of bandwidth size or package. They have a premier plan that gives you a second router delivered. It's all configured and they are bridged together. So in case one router fails, the other one picks up. It's for the ultimate reliability. That's the premier plan. And again, you select the speed package you want. Um, there's a home office flavor and that has a slightly different speed package. Those are asymmetrical to kind of fit home office use. Now, the speed packages start at 75 megabits and go all the way up to 3 gigabit. And the cost of these, you can spend well under $200 for the starter plans, and then you can spend up to $1,700, $1,800 for 3 gigabits. But most of my clients end up spending between $200 and $400. I have some doing more, but in general, that's what it costs. It's well worth it. And the the, the more important thing that I like about Big Leaf is they don't make you sign a long multi-year contract. They do a one-year contract if you want. They are flexible on how you renew it. And uh, we'll talk more about that as well uh, if you're interested. Ordering support uh, through Big Leaf Networks has been well thought out. Um, first, they only work with telecom professionals exclusively, as I mentioned before. Um, and there's a reason for that. The um, uh, guys like me do the onboarding, the general support, getting you ready for turn up. And then it kind of shifts where supports with the Big Leaf engineering team. This is proven brilliant, in my opinion, because early on when you're deciding, is Big Leaf going to work and how am I going to connect it? Will it work like I need it to work? You really want someone on board who has the time and the knowledge and experience to know what kind of underlying circuit you have. You know, I can look at a bill and know exactly what type of circuit and probably how it behaves. We may need to get a second or a third circuit for, for uh, a deployment. Having a professional that can look at that from the big picture is way better early on in the process. Um, as your order implements through, the Big Leaf support that you can count on uh, once you're up and running is, in my opinion, very, very good. Um, uh, there's not a lot of providers today where you can pick up the phone and be talking to an engineer in under two minutes who can see into your device. Um, I've told them how happy that I am with the support. My customers have told them. I'm hoping it stays that way. Um, so far, it's, that's the way it is. 
Their billing is very consistent. They have up they have updated and fixed some issues with their billing platform. They now have a new system, a new platform for that. So that's been better. Uh, you missed that, which is good. Um, but the cool part is it's it's taxed uh, very little in the U.S. Because internet is one of the pure internet or internet services are taxed pretty low. So depending on your local area and where you live, um, where I live, there's zero tax in Florida on on big leaf services, but in other states you might have sales tax or something like that. But it's not like a LEC or a cable co that's got every fee and everything that they can stuff in there. Um, so uh, pretty much when you see a big leaf number, that's what you pay for the most part. If you stuck with me this long, thank you. Please click the like button and also know that the link below not only goes to my webpage where you can get more information on Big Leaf from me and hopefully my help, but you can also go right to Big Leaf's direct page and see so much more information. Um, I would love to hear from you. I'd love to work on your deployment. Contact me any way you like um, and thank you for your time.